Hello my good YouTubers, I thought I'd uh, make a quick video, this is the Chester DB10, it's a 10x21 uh, lathe, um, fitted with a, a piston type uh, tool post. Now this is uh, one of the cheaper models, it's not the uh, original AXA type. This is one of the uh, cheaper made China and Chinese imports. Um, seem to work perfectly fine. As you can see, I've installed it. I've also uh, tested out a you know, cut on it and stainless steel as well as brass. And uh, it seems to work perfectly fine. I need to take it to pieces, mind you, because uh, I want to uh, grease it up with some good pressure grease. Um, which is like the uh, it's the uh, lithium molly type greases so uh, I thought I'd make a YouTube video to show you how uh, I fitted this um, I think it's probably I don't know I might have done it the wrong way I might I, I think I've done it a reasonably good way so uh, but yeah that's uh, for those who are interested anyway here we go this is uh, obviously as you can see that locks in there your uh, one of the uh, tool, tools, uh, tool posts there. I've got. To, I used the normal nut that came with this because it, it came with a clamp at the bottom with a 40 millimeter uh, threaded bar that goes all the way through the centre of the unit. And I obviously I, I used what came with it, um, and I haven't modified any part of the uh, lathe at all really. Um, well, I haven't modified any part of the lathe, but let's take this off, let's have a look. I'll show you how uh, I did this. Off comes the uh, top nut. This is um, an M14 nut, this is. I'll try and do it without dropping it, of course. This is an M14 uh, custom made nut, obviously, they've manufactured it. Uh, with a flange on it, so you don't need a washer. So uh, we've taken that off. Let's uh, take the tool post off. There we go. Up we come. Now we have uh, put an insert in these. So it's going to be a bugger to get out because obviously I've. Uh, there we are. You can see there's the central column again. This this tube here come with the tool post. Um, what I have had to do here though, if you I don't know whether you can see that on the video uh, or on the camera, that hole under there, uh, it came uh, with a 15mm hole and obviously on the lathe here we have this, this flange and that is a 20mm in diameter um, this is obviously 40 millimeters, but I'll show you how I've put that on in a minute. But that obviously had to be machined out, and obviously I've reamed that, I've to reamer through that, to give it uh, a clearance hole about 20.1 millimeters, which sits very snug on there. But obviously the 0.1 gives it good enough uh, clearance for the. Um, you know the, the, the shaft here. Um, we'll come back to the tool post in a minute when I take it to pieces because obviously I need to uh, uh, grease it up. It's good to use grease on the inside of those because obviously oil is one of them things that can't really reach those areas. Um, but I mean we've used a, a pair of pliers here. This is just tightened on a nice and snug right down to the bottom. Loosen it off. quite a nice snug. Now, if you look under here you'll see the original thread appearing. Now this is what comes with your DB10 lathe and it has a small, it's only threaded, there's about 5mm not threaded before it enters the uh, the top compound slide. Um, 
and then the rest of it is threaded. Now on here, this is this is the normal bar that came with it, and obviously it was a bit too long. So what we did was we've machined off and faced it off with a you know nice you know nice clean face off at the bottom there. Inside there I've recessed it because obviously this is a 10 by 1.5 M10B 1.5 thread here. Obviously the length you know you drill the hole inside here plus an extra let's say five millimeters I think I worked it to inside here in the length so it's the length of that plus an extra five mil and then I've gone 50 millimeters in with a 10 millimeter drill uh, the tapping drill size for the center of this is an 8.5 because obviously it needs a M10 by 1.5 so it's an 8.5 millimeter uh, tapping drill that you need a hole in the center uh, and obviously only 15 millimeters in the tank is about up to there don't know whether you, you can't see that with the camera as I say uh, very, very well but it goes approximately 15 millimeters in it with a 10 millimeter drill just to allow for that uh, part that's not threaded there and then the rest of it's threaded uh, and that gives you uh, a 40 millimeter bar which obviously as you can see extends it the length that's needed for the clamping uh, down onto the tool post so that's that's that uh, out the way so that gives I managed to make that a reasonable explanation now the way that these tool posts come apart is these the piston lugs which come out and obviously push against your tool holder you uh, what I tend to do what I've found is the easiest way to do this is if you get a Allen key the right size of course not just any Allen key will do the right size Allen key of course put it in obviously loosen them off and I like to I don't take them completely out just loosen it off so that they come up and they're still in there and they're obviously loosened off to uh, give you about a good four millimeters out as you can see four millimeters of axis on there which is able for you to lift the lugs up now they are one they only go in the right way if you get them in the wrong way one will clamp one won't so you've got to make sure that you, you keep them the right way around. And what I do is, you can use a drill bit or anything really. If you lift it up, obviously they're on springs back here. So if you lift them up, stick a Allen key or something in there to wedge it in. Uh, let me get a, a drill bit. I had a small drill bit actually going around here. Fit it in nicely. There we are. Here's another drill bit. We uh, pull the uh, second side up. We slowly but surely. Whoops. Bit fiddly, but be patient. Don't uh, don't try and wedge anything under there or, or whatever. Just lift it up with your fingers, nice and softly. Put a drill bit behind, as you can see. And this, if you've got them out enough, will lift out. Because what's holding it in, obviously, is the uh, is the little spring lugs on the inside, little cylinders. Stick that like that. Okay. Right. The only one left really to that free. There we go. You can see that freely comes out now. Now under here what I've done is I've made stainless steel washer because the thickness of the piece down in the hole there is about 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of a millimetre too thin for the uh, this shim, this 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 recess here. So what I've done is I've machined about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a millimetre recess into the washer. 
Wash's diameter is obviously 14mm to fit over the 14mm shaft. 